Good evening, everyone. My name is Mr. Lee. Today, I will continue my lesson, the second law of thermodynamics. Before I start my lesson, I want you all to recall back what is the first law of thermodynamics. In general, the first law of thermodynamics is also known as the conservation of energy principles. It means that the energy cannot be destroyed or created, but it can be changed to the other forms of energy. Let me give you some examples to refresh your mind. You are given a hot coffee, which is 100 degrees Celsius. And then this is a room, it's a, uh, it's a cooler room. And then the energy loss by the hot coffee to the surrounding is actually equal to the energy absorbed by the surroundings. So, the so the energy is conserved because the E in minus E out is equal to the E system. So the first of thermodynamics is valid in this case. Now mind, let me give you another example so that you can have a more understanding about first of thermodynamics. You are given a ball at the hill. And then this is a horizontal ground. And then this is an inclined plane, which has a height of hash. At the here, the ball has a potential energy of mg hash. The potential energy here is the maximum. Maximum potential energy. So, when the ball starts its motions, it rolls down. It will have a kinetic energy, which is known as 1 quarter mv squared. M stands for mass, V stands for velocity. So until here, until the ground, the potential energy is zero. This is a minimum potential energy. You consider this is a one complete system. You see the energy in the ball, which is PE, potential energy, doesn't lose or, de or being destroyed, but it has been changed to the kinetic energy, which is 1 or 2 mv squared. Yeah, maybe in the process, maybe there's a, some friction loss or heat loss. It can be, it can't be, uh, it can't be prevent. But anyway, in general, the energy is conserved in this case. So this is the mainly about the first law of thermodynamics. What do we know about heat energy? Heat energy is but however, the first law of thermodynamics doesn't satisfy every situation. For example, I have a hot, hot coffee here. This is hot coffee, and this is the surrounding. Just now I mentioned the heat loss by the coffee is the same as the heat absorbed by the surrounding. If I follow this saying right, then I can I can assume that this coffee can be hotter in a cooler room. Why? Because the energy absorbed by the coffee is equal to the energy being released by the surrounding. Is it valid or log logic? No, right, of course. So, the first law of thermodynamics is not valid here. So, we have a second law of thermodynamics which indicates the directions for processes. Which can indicate the directions and then it can provide a means of for measuring the quality of energy. That's a usage for the second law of thermodynamics. Before we go deeper into the second law of thermodynamics, I want you all to learn a one new term first, which is called thermal energy reservoir. So what is this the mean? Actually, thermal energy reservoir is a thermal, is a large thermal body which can absorb large amount of energy without under changing in the temperature. For example, oceans, lake, river, they can absorb large amount of energy, but their temperature is still remain constant. That is mean by the thermal energy reservoir. Under thermal energy reservoir, we have source and sink. Students, please to mix up these two terms. Source is the reservoir which can supplies energy, whereas the sink 
it's a reservoir which can absorb energy. So now, students, I clarified these two terms, source and sink. Please remember the, these two terms well because it may be very important in the subtopics later. Normally, work can be converted into heat easily. But how can the heat be converted into the work again? How? Do you have any ideas of that? But heat engines can be functions like that. Heat engines can be can convert the heat into the work. So I want you all to pay attention because now I will explain this top, uh, this heat engines thoroughly. I hope that you all can understand about it. You have a heat engines here. And then these heat engines receive energies from the high temperature source. This, this energy source can be anything, can be solar energy, hydraulic, hydro energy, and so on. This H, HE, which stands for heat energy heat engines, it receives heat from the high temperature source. And then part of the part of the heat is converted into the work. This work is a rotating shaft. I mean, this rotating shaft is com is connected to the turbine or generator to create the en to create the work, and then part of the part of the heat energy is left as a lo low temperature sink, and then this cycle is repeated again. So this is mainly about the heat engines process. Hey students, please record back this. W net out is actually W net out equals to work done out minus work done in. So if you produce the work done out. So now students, you have a uh, knowledge about the heat engines. The heat engines can convert the heat into the work. Of course, we must know the performance of the heat engines. So we have a special measurement for the heat engines for the purpose for the performance of the heat engines. We have thermal efficiency. The symbol of thermal efficiency is eta. This is called eta for the symbol. So it's normally calculated by Mac work output over heat input and then this work output is normal, normally we represent it by work net out this work net out is normally like a rotating of shaft produ uh, which is results from the heat input from the heat engines just now and the heat we represent it by Q E This work net out is also the difference between the heat transfer out and the heat transfer in as well. Work net out equals to Q out minus Q in. It's the difference between the heat transfer out and heat heat transfer in. So you just substitute the formula inside this, and then you will finally get Q out minus Q in. Or Q in, then you will get one minus Q. You will get one minus Q out over Q in. This is the formula to calculate the thermal efficiency. However, now I will introduce you some new term, which is called Q heat heat transfer at temperature H and temperature L. QH means the magnitude. QH means the magnitude of the heat transfer between the cyclic device and the medium at the temperature H. Whereas the QL is the magnitude of heat transfer between the cyclic device and the medium at temperature L. Of course, the temperature of QH is higher than QL. So you just substitute the QH and QL inside this formula. 
So finally, you will get 1 minus Q L over Q H for your final thermal efficiency. So now I will give you some exercise practice for the thermal efficiency. Now I will give you one simple example for you to remember to master the thermal efficiency. This is the heat engines. It receives the heat from the furnace. At the magnitude of 80 megawatts. And then there is a 50, watt, 50 megawatt was dumped into the river. So the question is how many, how much the work done? for the output and then what is the thermal efficiency for the heat engines so how to calculate the work output and the thermal efficiency just now I have mentioned that the work output is equal to Q Q H minus Q L. Q H is the magnitude of the heat transfer between the device and the medium at the temperature H, whereas the Q L is the magnitude of the heat transfer between the device and the medium at the temperature L. Of course, the heat transfer, the amount of heat transfer in in H in temperature H is higher than the heat transfer in temperature L. So you just Take 80 minus 50 and then you will get 30 megawatts. Done. The first question is work output. How to calculate the thermal efficiency? The thermal efficiency from the formula given is a net power equals to work net out over Q in. Q in is the heat transfer input. Work that out, you have got it, 30 megawatts, substitute inside here, and then this one is given, just substitute inside here, so you just got 30 over 80, which is 3 over 8, the thermal efficiency. So now you have uh, ideas about how to calculate the thermal efficiency. So now we are really go deeper into the second law of thermodynamics. There are two statements to support the second law of thermodynamics. There are Kelvin Planck statements and also the closure statement. For now, we will discuss the Kelvin Planck statements and closure statement. In Kelvin Planck statements, it says that it is impossible to have a device operate on a cycle to receive a single heat from a reservoir and then produce a net amount of work. What does it mean? In other words, it means that there is no heat engines to produce the thermal efficiency of 100%. So, now uh, I will give you some examples about the second law of thermodynamics, the applications of the second law of thermodynamics. They are refrigerators and heat pumps. So the refrigerator in our housing area, uh, in, in our housing, they apply the second law of thermodynamics. Let me show you how the refrigerator work by using the second law of thermodynamics.
the gas flow, flow uh, through the capillary tube is known as refrigerant. At first, the refrigerant, if a high temperature, is compressed into the compressor. And then after he leaves the compressor, the temperature is, relative, is relatively high. And then it will enter the condenser. In condenser, it will release heat to the surrounding medium. So after that, after go out from the condenser, it, it will be shorted by the expansion valve. In this case, the temperature and the pressure drops uh, drastically. And then after that, he enter back the evaporator to absorb heat again, and then later you will be compressed by the compressor and then again it will be condensed in the condenser so this cycle is repeated for several for several times so this is how the refrigerator work by using the second law of thermal so just now we have learned about the functions of refrigerator by second law of thermal dynamics so for each refrigerator, we have to know the coefficient of performance. We have to know how efficiently the refrigerator works. So we have coefficients of performance with abbreviation is known as COP. The concept of coefficient of performance is the same as the thermal efficiency in the heat engines. So how we calculate the coefficient of performance? Normally, we take desired output over, over required input. In this case, the desired output is known as QL, whereas for the required input, it's known as W that's in. So just now we have learned that W net in equals to Q H minus Q L. You substitute the formula inside this, so we will finally get one over Q H over Q L minus one. Actually, do you know that why we need to take the QL? Q is the magnitude of the heat transfer between the device and the mediums at temperature L, whereas the W net in is the work net in. Why we take QL over net in? Just as I have mentioned that, you see, this is a boiler or condenser. This is a condenser, and then this is the compressor. Then this is what is the evaporator, the uh, evaporator, and then, and then this one is the valve. You see that L actually is the sink. You see, uh, when the refrigerant with high temperature high temperature leave the compressor it will enter the condenser this condenser actually serves as a sink so of course the temperature will become lower so this is the QL here and then after that it will go it will be extruded through the valve and then it will be evaporated again by the evaporator this evaporator will heat up the refrigerant so there is a work that he that in here so we just take the ratios of this over this we get the coefficients of performance
if there is anything wrong uh, in evaporator or condenser, the refrigerator will not be work so functionally. Okay. Now we proceed to the heat pumps device. Since you all have already learned the functions of the refrigerator and the calculations for the COP, which is which stand for the qualification of performance of the refrigerator. Before we start, I just want to clarify something with you all. Heat pumps and refrigerator have a main difference. That is the refrigerator they maintain the refrigerator space at a lower temperature, whereas for the heat pump they maintain the heater space at a higher temperature. So there's a difference between them. But for the calculation of the COP, they are almost the same. I want to make a comparison between the refrigerator and the heat pumps. Yeah, the formula is also desire output over input require input. Desire output or require input. Just now we have talk, we have discussed about the desired output for the COP in refrigerator is QL over WE. And I have explained why we should take QL instead of QH because the outputs for the refrigerants after leaving the compressor they are being condensed so they lose temperature so QL actually is a heat transfer between the device and the medium at lower temperature but heat pump is, is a different story because the heat pump is to maintain the heat space at a higher temperature so instead of QL we use QH over work E the concepts are still the same, but the, but the main thing is the desired output of refrigerator and the hash pump, the heat pump, is different. Since you all have a knowledge about the Kevin Blanc statement just now, and I already explained the functions of the refrigerators and the heat pumps, so now I will talk about the closure statement. Actually, the concept of the closure statement is almost the same as the Kevin Blanc statement. That means in closure statement, it, it means that it is impossible to transfer the energy from a cooler body to a higher temperature body without leaving an effect on the surroundings. It is almost the same with the Kevin Blanc statement. So I will without delay of time, I will explain the next subtopic. And since we know the second, first law of thermodynamics and also the second law of thermodynamics, and then these two laws are valid for mostly all the cases. But now there are some scientists who want to challenge these two laws, and numerous attempts have been taken but failed. However, any device that violates these two laws is known as perpetual motion machines and then any device that violates the first law of thermodynamics is known as perpetual motion machines of first kind whereas any device that violates the second law of thermodynamics is known as perpetual motion machines of second kind So these are the perpetual motion machines which has not been exist yet for now but maybe in the future, who knows? The second law, in the second law of thermodynamics, we have learned that 
there is no heat engines which has a thermal efficiency of 100%. But someone will ask us, then what is the highest of the thermal efficiency in heat engines? So before we answer this, we must firstly define these two terms. One is the reversible process and another one is irreversible process. <laughs> Reversible process and irreversible process. A reversible process is defined as a process that can be reversed without leaving any trace on the surroundings. That means that both the system and the surroundings are returned to their normal states throughout the process it's called reversible process whereas the YC was the opposite of reversible process is known as the irreversible process that means in irreversible process the process cannot be reversed like for example I left a cup of hot coffee on the table and then I let it cool and then after 10 minutes the coffee is left to be cold so, in that process, we cannot reverse the coffee into the hot temperature at the cooler room. So, this is called an irreversible process. There are some factors to cause irreversible process to be happens. And then, these factors are normally known as irreversibilities. There are some irreversibilities to cause irreversible process to happen such as the frictions and then the unstrained expansion of gas as, as well as the heat transfer through a, through a finite temperature So these are the um, many three irreversibilities to cause irreversible process to be happened. And then we have internal reversible and also the external reversible. The internal in the internal reversible it means that there is no irreversibilities occur within the boundaries of a system whereas for the external reversible it means that there is no irreversibilities occur outside the system's boundaries during the process so now we will keep continuing to the reversible process the most famous the reversible process is known, is known as the Carnot cycle. There is a four, there is a four reversible process in the Carnot cycle. There are two, there are two isothermal process and two adiabatic. process in kind of cycle so now I will explain the two isothermal process reversible process and two iso uh, sorry adiabatic process in kind of cycle At first, at 
first the gas is at first the gas is allowed to be expanded and then when the gas when the gas expands the temperature of the gas will drop when the gas expands and then the temperature will drop and then the small drops that's a small change in the temperature and then we label it as Bp which means the small change in the drops of the temperature and then some heat is transferred from the reservoir which means the source who maintains the temperature to cover the temperature drops here so in this case the pH is constant why because when the gas expands there's a small change in the, in the temperature the temperature drops slightly but later the heat is transferred inside the heat is transferred is transferred from a reservoir to, uh, to, to this and then this can cover the temperature drops so the first the pH is constant and then secondly this is the first diagram in a second secondly the reservoir is contacted by the insulations. This is the insulation to prevent any heat entering uh, entering this system. And then the, the gas the gases is continue expanding. It's continue expanding. The gas is still continue expanding and then the pH drops of course the pH will drop to become Pl the, the gas with a higher temperature of course will drop to a lower temperature because when this when the gas expands the temperature of the gas drops and then no heat is entering the system because due to the insulations so in this case the temperature of the gas drops and now okay sorry and this is known as a reversible idea reversible reversible idea adiabatic process what is adiabatic process adiabatic process means there is no heat transfer in the system. That's the adiabatic means. Then this is known as the reversible isothermal process. I want you all to notice about the position of the cylinder. From one to become two. Then from the two, so it it was pushed up at the uh, to become at the position three. So now it's a reversible isothermal process again. And then see uh, for the first for the third one reversible isothermal process the insulin the insulation is against remove the insulation against remove so So now the, the, the piston the piston is pushed by the external force. There's an external force here. And then the 
the gas is starts to be to being compressed by the piston. And then the temperature and then the temperature and then, and then the temperature starts to become higher because the, the smaller the volumes, the higher the temperature, as we learned previously in uh, in the previous chapter. So this gas, the gas, this gas is being compressed. Cat gas is being compressed. So the temp, also the temperature will become higher. It will become higher temperature. However, there is a sink. This this system is connected with the is contact with the sink. So some of the heat is released from from the system to the sink. Actually, it's contact, but I just want to show the direction only, so I just make it separately. So the the slightly change in the temperature is being removed to the sink. So the PC, uh, the the the, key, the, key, the temperature is is keep constant. So now the first first step, reversible adiabatic process. This is this one is to locate la. This is the piston at the position three. Now back to the position two. So now once again, I uh, once again the insulation is connected with the system. And then, and then the gas is keep continuing compressed by the external force. And then when he, when the gas is being compressed continuously, the temperature of course will increase. However, the temperature increase cannot be released to the sink as it cover as the system is covered by the insulations. So the temperature, the, the increase in the temperature is keep in the system. So the temperature will raise again from the TL, from the lower temperature to the, to the TH, to the, to the higher temperature. So this system is keep repeating. This is a cycle actually because the process is, can be repeated by removing these insulations, by expanding the gas outside, and then by compressing the gas outside and by putting the insulations. So this is uh, mainly the process of the Carnot cycle. So I end this session with the Carnot cycle process. So uh, if you are interested, so you can, you can surf the internet and learn more from the internet because the knowledge, the knowledge of the thermodynamics is too much and then it's always changing from time to time. Then maybe, maybe next time, there will be someone create the device to violate the first law of thermodynamics and the second law of the thermodynamics. Who knows? So once again, thanks, thanks for your attentions. Thank you.